Welcome to May Fails. I'm gonna take you through all the products that unfortunately just didn't work out for me for one reason or another, and hopefully I can save you a little bit of money. I'm gonna start with a candle, which is the Diptyque Beverly Hills candle in my May favorites, which I'll leave linked on the screen above in case you haven't seen it. I included the city exclusive Miami candle, and I just loved that candle. It smells incredible. I believe it's like vanilla lime and white flowers or something like that. It's inspired by key lime pie, but it's not a gourmand scent. It's fresh and it's citrusy. It's amazing. The Beverly Hills candle has similar notes and this was a blind buy. The Miami candle I had already smelled before and loved. This has lemon instead of lime, but it also has mint and freesia. I love the smell of mint. Anything mint, I am totally here for in terms of fragrances, not minty lip products. That's a whole different story. I really wanted to love this, but unfortunately it's just too floral and too strong for me. I really thought that the mint and lemon were gonna be a little bit more prominent and they're not. It's much more of just like a floral candle. It does smell really nice though. I think it's just a little too strong for me. I could totally tolerate the scent if it weren't quite as pungent. There's just something about the floral note that is really overpowering the other notes and I wanted that mint to really come through, but it is an absolutely gorgeous vessel. And by the way, these are the Diptyque City exclusives, which means that year round, you can only buy those candles in that specific city, except for the one month out of the year where they open it up and you can buy any candle in any city or online, of course. And so I purchased three city candles online. New York and Miami are my favorites, but unfortunately Beverly Hills is a pass. Next, I got a very beautiful, package from YSL and they sent me their Touche Clot little concealer illuminator thingies and they claim it's eight hours of beauty sleep and a click and I've always been really curious about this but you know when there are super famous products that have been around for a long time sometimes I just start to think that maybe that technology is a little bit outdated and sadly for me that's the case with this. I like it better than I thought I would. I'm wearing both shades under my eyes right now. It doesn't say the shades. One of them was yellow, one of them was pink and after a few hours I did put on some of my Ficlo concealer so you you can't really see what the finish of this looks like anymore. Interestingly, it had more coverage than I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be almost no coverage, but I would say it was like a light, medium, maybe almost even medium coverage, which I was very surprised by. Something about this formula though really emphasized texture under my eyes. It just made it look a little bit dry. And I thought that was supposed to be the opposite of this experience. But to me, it felt a lot like the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And I had the same issue with that one. So it might just be the way my skin interacts with some, you know, certain liquidy formulas, but also the shade range just is not good enough for me. You know, I can see in the viewfinder, my under eyes are coming across a little bit too bright on camera. So this product is definitely coming through underneath my Fit Glow concealer. And there weren't any other shades that were gonna be a possible match for me. So it's just, yeah, for me, not worth the money. YSL also sent over a few shades of their new line of lipsticks. These are the Rouge Pure Couture, the bold high pigmented lipsticks or something like that. And they sent me a variety of shades. I'll just pop up some footage of me applying all of the different colors as I talk through this. So first, let me talk you through the pros of the formula. These do feel really nice on the lips. They're a beautiful creamy finish. They're not too unlike the Armani Lip Power Creamy Satin Lipsticks that I absolutely love. And they're not a super thin, runny formula. In fact, I really, really like the formula of these. It's like a cream that has a nice amount of grip to it. So because these have a really high amount of pigment, they're not gonna slide all around your mouth. I felt pretty secure with the color I had on my lips. However, I don't like them for two reasons. One, I hate this bullet. The shape of the bullet is round and when you have a product that has a lot of pigment in it, it's just too messy for me because I have a really, really thin upper lip and a very sharp cupid's bow. And so if I reach for a lip product that has a lot of pigment, I need something that's going to be shaped so I can get a really precise line. So it just felt really messy to me for that reason. I think these would have been so much better if they had had like a square or a traditional lipstick shape. Actually, there are three reasons I didn't end up liking these. The second reason is the scent. Instead of the classic YSL mango scent that we all know, which I like, but it has always been just a little bit too strong for me. This one now has the scent of all the L'Oreal lipsticks, and I believe that YSL is owned by L'Oreal, so they I'm assuming they use the same manufacturer. They certainly have the same fragrance. And this is the fruity floral scent that L'Oreal has been pushing in all their products. 
and I hate it. I really don't like the floral quality. I hate how either drugstore brands or luxury brands are just so heavily fragranced. That's why on my channel, you tend to see more indie brands that have fragrance-free products or products that are just like lightly vanilla scented. I just find that I don't get along with drugstore brands or super high-end brands because of that perfume element that I tend to have a reaction to or it's something that I just don't find pleasant. And then the final reason why I just ended up not enjoying these lipsticks were the colors. It might have just been the colors that they sent, but I really didn't think that any of the shades were for me. These seem like L'Oreal drugstore colors. We have a skincare product. This is the Rene Rouleau Redness Care Firming Serum that calms irritation and is anti-aging. So I recently worked with Rene Rouleau on a sponsored Instagram post for their Better Than Bomb Cleansing Bomb, which is such an incredible cleansing product. And they sent me a huge PR package with like an ungodly amount of products. And I'm super bummed to say that their products contain a lot of ingredients that really irritate my skin. A lot of them really smell kind of like alcohol. They have some like kind of fragrant fruit extracts. I'm bummed because I've heard so many awesome things about Rene Rouleau. And honestly, they sent a whole bunch of products that are like vitamin C, chemical exfoliants and retinols, even though I can't use those products. And I told them that I can't use those products. So I feel really, really bad when that happens, but I will find a home for all of those products. And so far, I just really like their cleansers, which are fantastic. I tried the vitamin, like emulsification cleanser. That one's fantastic, especially in the morning. But the redness serum, it really bothers me when a product is intended to use on irritated skin and then ends up irritating my skin more. And this irritates me on days when my skin is not even reactive. It's just normal. So that's a bummer. Something about whatever they're including in their range in general is just not working out for me, but the cleansers are awesome. I got another skincare PR package. This one was from Josie Marin and it's their Whipped Argan and Pineapple Enzyme Deep Pore Cleansing Mask. This is really nice. It's a clay mask and it has a lot of exfoliating particles. It has like a light kind of pineapple scent. Yeah, it smells amazing, like pineapple creamsicles or something. And it did leave my skin feeling very soft. However, the exfoliating particles in this are so insanely harsh and there is a lot of them. So I just felt like I was just rubbing this in and as I was trying to wash it off, my skin was just getting irritated because it just, it felt like it was like scratching my skin. Way too harsh if you have really sensitive skin. My friend Ilsa on Instagram, she is Glow Perfecto, sent me a wonderful box with some lip products. She was helping me prepare for a really big lip balm video and she had an extra one of the new Tula lip mask and she also sent this in the package as well and this is the I Do Care lip oil. It doesn't say the shade name. It's not in English so I can't tell but it's the berry shade and it smells really good. It smells like orange and berry candy maybe and the actual formula itself is nice. It's just like a lightweight lip oil, a little bit of a gel quality to it which is nice because that means it's not quite as runny as a you know another lip oil formula on the market. Unfortunately though I really wanted it to turn this color. Instead it just flushes hot pink and then stains your lips intensely hot pink. So it seems like there's a pH adjusting pigment to it because it goes from this berry color to like a hot neon pink. And unfortunately, I just didn't like the pink color. I'm not a hot neon pink girl by any means. Great formula though. Another makeup item, we have the new L'Oreal Infallible Grip up to 36 hour wear gel mechanical liner in intense black. I'm wearing this all on my upper waterline today. And if you thought that maybe my lower waterline looked a little bit like dark or smoky, it actually wasn't intentional. This just for some reason ended up transferring to my lower lash line, even though I tried the brown shade and the brown shade did not transfer. Transfer. So I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's just a me thing. Maybe I just didn't do something right with this. Or maybe I blinked too fast, but the brown one didn't transfer. This one did. It is really black though. Good price. So maybe give it a shot, but I would definitely recommend the brown one over this. Next, we have the eyeshadow that I'm wearing today. Kaja launched two new Beauty Bento eyeshadow trios. I'm wearing the shade Forest Night today. And in a lot of my other content that I just filmed, I was wearing Coral Sunrise. You know that the Kaja Beauty Bentos are some of my favorite eyeshadows of all time. The formulas are amazing. They're so impactful. And I think for $36, three shades, I mean, it's a good deal. But they did something different with these and I'll show you. So normally the glitter toppers on each shade of the shimmer ones have more of like a finely milled glitter. So this is the glitter topper of Forest Night. And I'll show you, it's beautiful, but it feels like a wet, flaky, foiled glitter. That's the glitter topper of Forest Night. And that's the pan, the glitter topper of Coral Sunrise. I mean, so pretty. And it's it almost feels like sand. It's a really interesting texture. 
So I'll get to why these are fails in a second. So these are the glitter toppers, right? Really, really cool, really impactful shimmer shades. However, in order to get that kind of a swatch and that kind of payoff, these are so wet and chunky and they're all different colors in there that you kind of have to like rub your fingers in. And the only way to get it to perform is to smudge it and smear it. If you tap it, it's not like a powder glitter that you can tap on, you get absolutely no payoff. You have to smear it. And what happens when you smear it is I got so much fallout, like really bad fallout under my eyes on both shades. Now, obviously you could totally just do your eyes first and maybe that would solve the problem, but I'm not like that. I always like to do my eyes last. And at this point in my life, I'm probably not gonna change the way I do makeup. So I was just kind of disappointed with the fallout from the glitter shades. Coral Sunrise does look really pretty when it's on the eyes and it just looks kind of like a beautiful champagne -y gold with some pops of peach. But ultimately, if I think about what I'm gonna reach for, I would reach for Glowing Guava, Toasted Caramel, and some of the other warmer Kaja shades more than I would reach for this one. And this color is really nice. Like, I've, I don't think I've ever worn colors like this so much before that are kind of dirty gray brown shades with like greens and golds. So I do think it's cool and it's nice to have. And also in both of these, the matte bottom shades have a little bit of shimmer in them. And I felt like they were just very patchy, very dry and difficult to blend. And the other Kaja Bentos, the matte shades, are so smooth and buttery and blend like a dream. So here's the matte shade in Forest Night. You can see the little bit of shimmer. And then here's the almost matte shade in Coral Sunrise. Yeah, when I was doing my makeup, both of these, the bottom matte shades just took me like an extra five minutes than it normally would to apply like a deeper matte brown. Next, L'Oreal sent me their whole line of new like slim matte lipsticks. Okay, these are the L'Oreal Color Riche Intense Volume Matte Lipsticks. They're $13.99 and Ulta says, discover L'Oreal's powdery Color Riche Intense Volume Matte Lipstick that lasts up to 16 hours. Infused with hyaluronic acid, this lipstick leaves lips feeling comfortable and looking fuller all day long. Color doesn't smudge, bleed, migrate, or feather. This is kind of a favorites and a fails. There are two shades in here I really, really like, and I might push aside the cons of the product and I would wear those. But I'm just gonna tell you my general thoughts and feelings because I did wanna warn you about certain things of this launch. First of all, ugh, mm -mm. hate it. I hate the way that L'Oreal scents their lipsticks. It is like a very, very strong floral scent. A little bit less strong than the YSL ones. The YSLs are even a little bit more subtle. This is just like, ugh straight floral perfume, maybe a little bit of the fruitiness that YSL has. YSL is like equal parts fruity floral. This is like floral with a hint of fruit and it does smell a little bit powdery. It's the kind of scent that just makes me feel like I have a headache and just makes me want to gag. I really don't like it. I have super strong reactions to scents. I know all of you really appreciate when I talk about scent experiences and so I did want to include these in the fails video even though there are aspects of this formula I really like. I hate when influencers don't talk about the way that products smell and go into detail about it. Again, we have another case of just weird drugstore colors. Ulta says that the saturated shades flatter a variety of skin tones. And I just frankly think the shades they picked are weird. It feels like there's like a million reds and a million kind of like peachy coral pinks. And then some incredibly dark berries, some like very weirdly gray shades, and then that's it. So these are all the shades that I didn't really like with the exception of one that I accidentally swatched in there. I do feel like they got the reds really well. So just look at that shade range. It's just a little off. And then on top of this, they have five reds. It's like, could we have maybe forfeit two of the reds for some more standard, like merit signature lipstick shades. That's what I'm talking about. These are all either too cool toned and like too gray or have too much white pigment in them. They're just not flattering. The one I do really like is 173, which is a beautiful hybrid of a pink and a red, pretty much like equal parts. And I think it's really brightening. And so I'm definitely gonna keep this one and just see if I can maybe push past the scent, although it's, it's unlikely. Then there's 193, which is is a stunning orangey red. And those are my two favorite shades. I think they're really brightening and they look absolutely beautiful. So swatched on my hand here, we have 173, which is the pinky red. And then this is 193, which is the orangey red. Oh, I forgot about this one. 213. 
213 is a nice vampy berry. That's a little bit better than the other one. And 203 is nice. It's like a deeper, very classic neutral red. So that one is 203, which is the classic red, but these are the two I like. So that's the full shade range, and I apply to every single color, and I will leave a YouTube shorts or Instagram linked on the screen above if you want to see me apply all the shades. I just really think that the color choices for this range were odd, at least for me, but I feel like a lot of people will agree. And for the last part of the video, I have six different lip balms. I'm planning this massive best and worst lip balm video. I'm gonna break it down by category. It's gonna be super informative. I have like 50 lip balms that I've collected over the course of like two years. And these were some that I purchased recently that I really didn't like. And I just wanted to let you know because some people are always like very curious to see what lip balms I like or don't. And I'm gonna start with the one that has just like totally enraged me. This is a $68 lip balm. This is from You Beauty, which is a very, very pricey brand. And this is the Plasma Lip Compound. This has a lot of incredible ingredients. It has like a ton of acids in it. It's supposed to help exfoliate the lips, plump them up, increase volume and hydration, lock in moisture, brighten the lips, all that stuff. It has like mandelic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid, so many different acids. I believe they have sustainable packaging. I think I think the formula is really good and you probably would see benefits over time if you used it every day. But what's weird about it is, first of all, you squeeze it and it's so hard. I'll show you up close. It's so hard. Oh my God. That was really hard to get that product out. So you'd think it would be really thick and occlusive like the Bite Agave lip mask that we all loved, but it's not. When you apply it to your lips, it suddenly just melts and like turns into a kind of really thin, slippery, almost like lip oil, lip serum kind of product. And because of that, it's super runny and gets in my mouth. It's just one of those products that just inevitably is constantly in my mouth. And I could not for the life of me figure out what it is, but there's an ingredient in here that is super, super floral. It smells smells like rose perfume or something like that, but I didn't see any rose in the ingredients list. And it's not the kind of rose, like the By Terry lip balms. I kind of liked that even though I hate floral scents. I love the texture of that, but the scent I was okay with. This it just honestly, when it's on my mouth, the experience is as if I sprayed a rose perfume on my arm and licked my arm. Like it, it honestly makes me want to throw up. It's so weird. I don't know what's going on with that given the fact that I couldn't find any fragrance or any like rose flower extract or oil in the ingredients list. So save your money, save your $68. Kind of a similar experience. Now this one is a formula I really enjoy, but I just don't enjoy the actual scent of it. So I did want to include it so you can have a heads up for those of you who appreciate the scent callouts. I'm going to apply it because I'm not too familiar with the formula yet. This is the Mara Sea Silk Lip Balm with algae and moringa. And it comes in a squeezy tube, kind of like the Bite Agave Lip Mask. And you squeeze it out and it's really thick. First of all, I really don't like products where you have to use your fingers to get the lip balm out. It's not very hygienic. That's the thing I hate about the Bite Agave Lip Mask the original one. And then inevitably there's this tiny little cap and this tiny little cap is like so hard to put back on. And then I always drop it and these little caps go everywhere. I would have liked an applicator like the U Beauty one, just some type of an applicator. The formula itself is really nice. It's thick. It feels kind of nourishing but it's silky and it's buttery. So if you're someone who likes a little bit of slip, it's not on the grippier side. Oh God, unfortunately, it, ugh, it, it, I'm like glitching because something happens to me when I don't like a scent. It smells and tastes like dirt, lavender, and herbs. Like there's a strong dirt component. Something in here, like very like iron heavy. I get like, I don't know what it is. I gotta take it off. Ugh. I don't know if it's the algae or the moringa, but it just, I can't leave it on my lips long enough to say if it's a really good formula or not. It certainly feels beautiful on the lips. If they came out with like a vanilla version of this, I would be all over it. But I just think that having this smell like really earthy and herby and floral is just a choice that doesn't work for me. I also picked up the Paracone MD, the plasma or the cold plasma lip balm. And this one's interesting. You twist it off. It's like a chapstick, but it has cool packaging. It's a little bit on the pricey side. Can't remember, but I feel like it was in the $30 range or something like that. This does absolutely nothing. It's so thin and slippery. It's just like not doing anything for me. It's just, it feels like nothing. It's just gonna slide right off my lips. If there's no occlusive layer to lock in the hydration, I don't understand what people think is gonna happen because that hydration that it is adding is just basically gonna evaporate. And this is so thin, it just slides around. Like if I start talking or eating or anything, it's just gone. It does absolutely nothing, but it does have a nice smell. Tiniest, most subtle hint of vanilla. You can barely smell it. I also don't like the new Rose Ink Lip Treatment Hydrating Lip Balm. It has a nice little soft vanilla smell, plastic applicator. However, it is 
super grainy. As you massage your lips together, you think the graininess is gonna go away. Maybe they're little beads and pockets of butters and waxes that didn't get properly melted and combined. And then after a few minutes, it kind of starts dissolving as it gets warmed up to your lips. Not a good experience. It's also just quite thin. Again, all these bombs are similar in the sense that they're all just like thin, slippery ones that I don't like. Since I love the thick ones, I've included all the thin ones in this video. I'm sure this is hydrating, but it's just not occlusive enough to seal that hydration in. And I don't like a product that's gritty. And lastly, I'm nervous to share this one because so many of you recommended it to me, but it's the Jack Black Intense Therapy Lip Balm in Black Tea and Blackberry SPF 25. Now, first of all, I love the smell. Mm. Black tea and blackberry, smells really good. And it does have lanolin as the first ingredient and it also has beeswax. Lanolin and beeswax are the two ingredients I look for because those were the star ingredients of the original Bite Agave lip mask. So I was hoping that this would be similar and be really thick and then that would solve my search and my search would just finally end. Unfortunately, it's pretty thin. So again, it's slippery, so I feel like it just doesn't last, which means it doesn't really do much for my lips. If you've tried Aquaphor, to me, this has the same texture as Aquaphor, and I obviously just, like I've said a million times, prefer something thicker, a lot stickier, and something that has more grip. But out of all the thin ones, I can get on board with this, except for the fact that I can taste the sunscreen in here, and everyone told me in my DMs, in the community post, all about the lip balm recommendations, everyone said that you can't taste the sunscreen, but you haven't met a nose like mine, or taste buds like mine. The sunscreen is in my mouth, the sunscreen taste is going down the back of my throat. It's irritating my throat right now. And that's why I don't like slippery lip products because they just end up in my mouth. And now my mouth is watering because it's like, ah, get this out. Really, really, really unfortunately don't like the taste. I'm sorry that I'm so sensitive. Like I, I know that everybody said you can't taste the SPF, but you can. Those are all my fails for the month. Let us know in the comment section what your fails are so you can also help the community save a little bit of money. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps YouTube to push our channels and it makes all the hard work worth it. I appreciate all of you. Hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.